Have you ever seen some Chrome extensions like Yesware here? They inject themselves right into the web page. And here's a couple of things that Yesware does. It basically takes over your Gmail when you compose a email also. Let's close that. This bar down here is injected by Yesware. So it really enhances your Gmail experience. Um, if you look in the corner here, there's no icon for Yesware. So how's Yesware being injected into the page automatically in Gmail? In this screencast, I'm going to go over how to make a little extension that does just that. In this example here, I'm going to show you. We're going to be able to do a search not on Google but on Bing. We made a little injected a little search on Bing button here and when you hit it it goes right over to Bing. So how do we do that? How do we do that with Yeoman and Angular? So let's not waste any time, get started. Let's go over to the command line. I'm gonna make a new directory. Chrome extensions. I'm gonna call the extension Binged. And let's switch into it. Now, Node, NPM, Yeoman have all been installed and are up to date. Did that offline. You do need to install the Yeoman generator called Generator Chrome Extension. I have another screencast in the blog post about how I forked Generator Chrome Extension, but I'm going to use the official one here. So let's do that. NPM install, global. Generator Chrome extension. Gonna go let that run and I'm gonna come right back. Okay, I'm back. Everything installed okay. So, but let's check since I do have another version. I'm gonna check here to see exactly where this is located. Okay, this is gonna run the correct. Generator Chrome extension. It's not going to run the fork that I have also installed. And we can then go right into installing the scaffolding, which is going to be Yo Chrome extension. And also going to let that run. Oh, we have this always messes me up. We get the, the wizard right away. I, th I think it's going to go into an npm install and uh, bower install but it doesn't it goes okay so we're into the the wizard here what would we like to call this extension let's call it binged and we're going to let's add a little description here add a search with bing button to google search page so that'll be our description Next is what would you what a UI action would you like to use? Now the browser UI action, that's that little icon that you see on the top right of a Chrome page for an extension. The page UI action is where it actually shows up in the address line on the right side. We're gonna say no to this because we don't need that. We're gonna automatically inject it when we go to the Google page. So let's say no. So the next one is well, what uh, would you like more UI features? We're going to select content scripts, enter, and then for what do you like to use permissions? We're just going to hit enter here. I'm not going to use any of these permissions for the Chrome extension I'm going to do. Okay, now it goes into the Bower install and into the NPM install. And then, so this is going to take a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and everything installed successfully. The generator installed a scaffolding and I'm going to go to the Tmux which is a Windows window multiplexer. I'm just going to make two windows here. Let's take a look. Go in the Vim and I'm going to take a look at what was installed. So this is what the scaffolding installs, the generator Chrome extension scaffolding. We're going to primarily be working with this app directory and this manifest J JSON I'll talk about a little bit in just a little bit and we see the there's also node modules and barrel components here now I am going to copy over an icon that I made and put that inside of this images directory here 
Also, let's install Angular. We're going to use Bower to do that. Bower install Angular. And save that. Okay, that installed, and we can see over here that an Angular directory was made under Bower, rather the Bower components directory. Let's dig right in. I'm going to go down to manifest JSON. Manifest JSON is what defines the extension, and we have quite a few modifications to do there, so let's get started. I'm going to take out background, uh, the background scripts, background HTML. It is basically a system level uh, documents and the JavaScript in there can talk to the tabs, bookmarks, things that are in the system level of the browser. I'm not going to need it for this tutorial, so I'm going to take it out, keep things simple. Let's go down to the content script. So the content scripts load into the page itself and that's what we're going to focus on. We need to add a couple things from Angular. There's some content security policy things that need to be done. So in the manifest JSON and in the Angular itself uh, when dealing with Chrome extensions. Uh, one of them is this CSS document. So let's put that into CSS here. And I'm going to do Bower Components. CSS, oh, CSP dot CSS, and here we're going to load Angular itself. This is the JavaScript part of the content scripts. So, and we can just do the min. Okay, and lastly, we want to add a content security policy down here. To do that I'm going to I'm going to cut and paste it because it's kind of long. As we see here, this is called content security policy. It has this script source self, object source self. You can read more about why it's needed. Content security policy is needed in a Chrome extension. And the other item I cut and pasted here is called Web Accessible Resources and here I just did a, a wild card for the Bower Components Angular. And why don't we also delete out the background script just to keep things nice and simple. Oops, looks like I opened up content scripts there. Okay, so I'm going to save this, go over to the Chrome and uh, here at Chrome extension address URL you get to the Chrome extensions. We're in developer mode so let's load this extension we just created with Yeoman. Right. Go to Chrome extension directory, Bing, app, manifest JSON is right there. Let's load it up. Okay, we got an error here saying that I could not load Angular min for content script. Okay, so let's go back and see what was wrong there. It might be a misspelling. Ah, okay, there's no hyphen here. So I'm going to resave that. Go back, try to load it again, it'll give me the directory again. Okay, so it installed successfully. The manifest JSON's okay. There's that icon. I created a little fancy icon for this. And we are ready to start adding some more content, which goes into the content scripts JS file. And that's right here. Gonna cut and paste to save time here also. This is just a basic starter of Angular on the Chrome extension. This added event listener load does need to be included, but we don't have to check to see if the entire document is loaded because in our manifest JSON, this run at is at the document end. So the content scripts, and this is part of the content scripts, JSON is to run the content scripts JS or all this 
rather at the end uh, after the document does load. So we don't need to check that the DOM is loaded. Here is, this is run through what I cut and pasted. Uh, this is standard way to start an Angular project. Uh, we're calling it binged. Here we're going to grab the HTML node and we're going to set attributes on it. NG app and NG CSP. You must have this NG CSP. Now since we're loading Angular after the document has already been downloaded, we need to do what's called bootstrapping. So that command is right here, angular.bootstrap. We're going to put this node in here, HTML node, and we're going to put the name of the Angular app banged, and there's no additional Angular modules we're loading, so that stays just a blank array. So let's save it. Let's go check and see how this loads up. So each time you need, you make a change, whether it's to manifest JSON or content scripts, you need to reload the extension. I'm just going to hit uh, Apple key R here, and I'm going to switch tabs to Google. Uh, we're going to open up the inspector here to see what's going on. The Chrome Web Inspector. Let's reload the Google page here, which we're going to be making modifications to. And let's just take a look at the HTML attribute here. We see we did get a successful um, setting of the attributes here, ng-app and ng-csp. There was no errors, which is very good. So let's go back to content scripts and add some more information. We're going to want to add a, a simple directive just to get things, the ball rolling here. And let's define a basic controller. Uh, okay, well, you know what? we got to go back and let's find a place to put the controller. And we're going to, we're modifying the web page, so we're going to use, uh, just like we would do our normal web programming, we are going to be able to access all this DOM here. So here we see there's a div. It seems to um, cover most of the page. It's called Viewport 2. So let's put the controller, an Angular controller, right there. And I'm going to cut and paste that too. Save time. Let's get the indentation right there. And give a little bit more space. Okay, and we're going to grab that viewport, get element by ID, set attribute ng controller, main controller, and then we're going to do, we, we made a app variable here that loads our, our uh, references, our Angular module, and we'll do dot controller, main controller, just a blank one here. going to save it, again go back. We're going to go through the same process, reload the extension, reload the Google page here. Let's take a look at our... Okay, here is the viewport div, and we got the NK, uh, ng controller attribute set on there. We have no errors in the console, so that means everything loaded okay, Angular-wise. Great, so let's get this directive in now. Let's cut and paste again. Okay, here we're going to just create an element. And you notice we're using all vanilla JavaScript here. I'm going to make a div, set attribute, my directive on it. We're going to append to the viewport. So this will drop right there at the viewport. Save it. Let's go through our normal process. Reload the extension. Go back to the tab. Reload the tab. Okay, so at the bottom of the viewport, the direct there's the directive right there, installed. Okay, so let's add the directive code now. Put it right there. Let's give a little space here. Okay, the directive needs to be named my directive. 
needs to be the same. If it's my dash directive, it needs to be my directive. In camel case here, this is just a basic directive restricted to element and attribute. It's an element and an attribute, the way we defined it. We're going to replace it completely. And it's just going to be a simple um, a rat, uh, a anchor link uh, called search with Bing. So save it. Now let's go through our cycle here. Reload. Got to reload each time. Going to reload Google page 2. Let's see if this directive actually goes in. And uh, there it goes. There it is. Wow, we got it. So we got an Angular directive working and injected into the Google search page with Angular. Now that's a very good place to stop. So I'm going to do that. I am planning on about two other parts to this, but it may just be one other, hopefully. So hope you enjoyed that and it's useful as you're developing a Chrome extension that gets injected into a web page and stay tuned for the other parts as we finish up this Chrome extension called Binged.